Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and I'm going to be a first year medical student in September which is fastly approaching and so is the application season for 2021 applicants so I thought I would make this video as a kind of informational, instructional video kind of about how I got accepted into medical school. I just want to say that every year is different so please do not compare any of your scores or your methods with me and as this is probably going to be a very long and detailed video, I will get straight into it. So the first step, obviously, if you're going to apply to medical school, you need to decide that you want to go to medical school. And this is a pretty big step. And for me, I only realised this in year 11, which is grade 10. And this is fairly late. I know most people decide years and years in advance and they know from when they were a child that they really want to become a doctor. And yeah, that's totally fine, but also deciding late is fine as well, as long as you make sure that you prepare properly. As soon as I kind of discovered my love for medicine, the human body, everything like that, I joined the pre-medical club at my school. I also began researching around different topics I was interested in, and as well as researching, you know, the path to become a doctor, how to enter medical school, and I started watching videos just like this one. Once you're fairly confident that you're going to be applying to medical school, you need to make sure that you have some extracurricular activities that kind of back this up. And if you've been doing your research correctly and if you've been exploring different options of whether you're going to actually apply to medical school or not, um, you probably already have lots of extracurriculars that are applicable to medicine, as well as other hobbies and things that you do that are not really related to medicine. And I'll tell you why those are important in just a second. So I'll just go through and tell you some of the extracurricular activities that I did when I was in high school and preparing to apply to medicine and I'll tell you why each of those was fairly important. Firstly, the most important one for me I think was I was leader of the pre-medical society at my school, the one that I joined back in year 11, so the year later I became a leader in that. I was also captain of the field hockey team and vice captain of my cross country team as well as being leader of a club at my school called Fight On, which is basically a cancer awareness and fundraising club. Now, as you can see all of these, I had leadership roles, which shows my leadership capabilities. And also being a leader shows that you've been committed to that club for a relatively long time to be able to reach a leadership, a leadership position. Now, extracurriculars can really vary. And as you can see, only two of mine are somewhat vaguely related to medicine and the other ones are sports and it's really important to have things that are not science or STEM academic based as this shows the medical school that you have interests outside of medicine and that you know if you were to be accepted into that medical school that you would have other hobbies and not burn out and be able to find other ways to relieve stress and anxiety. Another big part of your medical school application is your work experience in the hospital and you know, these past couple of years have been really tricky because of COVID and I was lucky enough to have gotten my work experience done in 2019, the year before the pandemic started. And I actually did plan to have another work experience in 2020, but unfortunately that did not get to go ahead because of all the circumstances. So my work experience was actually relatively hard to come by, um, mainly because I did not live in the UK at the time. I live in Japan. so. Um, it was really difficult for me to, you know, even have a local hospital because I don't live there. So I had to get work experience through connections and that's relatively common, like finding people that you know who are in the medical field or um, maybe if you've done a study or if you were in hospital or something, reaching out to some people that you know, that's a fairly common way to get work experience. And work experience is super important for one, realizing and kind of consolidating why you want to go into medicine in the first place. And secondly, for your personal statement and interviews, this is really important. This should be a big bulk of your personal statement. And it also comes in handy when you're answering, you know, situational questions in the interview. And not only that, but also in the BMAT and UCAT, there are situational based questions. And this experience really helps you. Another step is getting letters of recommendation and as I mentioned I don't live in the UK, I actually go in an American system so this process was fairly unknown to like the counsellors, the British system of applying to medical school so I originally got actually two letters of recommendation although you only actually need one 
uh, for UCAS and for applying to medic medicine. So my counsellor actually merged those two personal statements and wrote one of his own, combining like quotes from both of them. And this you need to start pretty early. I'd say four months before you're actually applying to medical school, you need to start reaching out to these teachers and professionals and asking for letters of recommendation and asking if they'd be willing to write one for you. This person needs to know you very, very well and they need to be able to talk about you comfortably. The next part is studying for the UCAT and the BMAT, which is not necessarily the hardest part because both of these tests aren't very hard um, academically, but they're pretty hard time-wise to balance your time. And the only way to really get better at doing these is practice. And that's really where I fell short a little bit. Um, my scores were okay, like pretty good, but I definitely did not give myself enough time to practice. I only started practicing for the UCAT maybe midway through August and the exams end of August. And I started practicing for the BMAT around the end of August after my UCAT exam and the exam is in September. So I definitely did not give myself very much time to study for these. And I would 100% recommend that you spend, you know, start studying at least at the beginning of the summer before you apply, if not earlier. Um, especially if like you're worried about content, because the content should be really familiar for everybody. Um, but the main thing is like the time and just practicing the type of questions that you're going to be asked. I do have a video on how to use, how to study for the BMAT and I'll link it down below. But um, one of the main things I would say is practice tests and find some kind of online question bank. Whether, um, whether that's like a, a book full of question banks that you can get on like Amazon or something or like BMAT Ninja. BMAT Ninja is probably one of the best tools that you could use to study for uh, the BMAT. And that's what I used in the very short limited time that I had. I used BMAT Ninja and it definitely, definitely helped me. Bear in mind, I did not study for these tests very long. Um, I took my UCAT exam and my score was pretty okay and if you went back to the previous years it said you know all applicants above this cutoff on the UCAT or the BMAT were giving an interview and both of my UCAT and BMAT scores were above this cutoff so I thought that I would be fine like I thought that you know I'd get an interview in all the places that I applied to and yeah that was not the case actually apparently this year the 2020 applicants there was both a really huge increase in applicants and also the people's scores were much much higher this year so actually these two scores were the main reasons why i got rejected from the schools that i got rejected from and you know this is really frustrating because because i really did not spend that much time studying and i know if i did spend more time studying i would have been able to get an interview at these places but I did get an interview at my dream school and it was clearly stated in my rejections that the reason was because my BMAT and UCAT scores were just not high enough and this is really frustrating because they do not look at the rest of your application if your BMAT and UCAT scores are not high enough. There is a certain cutoff and if your scores are not above the cutoff you will not be getting an interview, the rest of your application basically won't be looked at. So it is very very important that you do well at these and that is why I recommend that you spend at least the whole summer before your application season to study for the BMAT and the UCAT. So my score for the UCAT was 2780. When I did all my practice exams I did get around this score most of the time but I, some of the sub scores surprised me significantly. So verbal reasoning, I got 670, which was much higher than like all my practice exams because verbal reasoning was my 100% worst one because I'm really slow at reading and it's a lot, a lot of reading. So that one was my weakest one and I actually scored fairly well, like 670 is not too bad. The next one was decision making and I got 650, which was much lower than what I got in my practice tests. Uh, next, quantitative reasoning. Quantitative reasoning, I got 780. That was roughly where I was getting my practice test, so that was not a surprise. The one that was really a surprise for me was abstract reasoning. I got 680 in the real exam, but in all my practice tests, I was getting like near to perfect scores on every single one. And then for some reason in the exam, my, um, my mind just kind of wasn't working on me. And um, the practice tests on them, it's really easy to go from question to question. 
but in the actual exam, you know, going from one question to the next, it loads for a few seconds. And those few seconds are really valuable because in the abstract reasoning section, you're only spent, supposed to spend 20 seconds on each question. So if you're waiting for a few seconds for the next question to load, it, it, was, uh, it was so frustrating in the exam. I was, because usually I look at one question for like 30 seconds and then I'll skip through a bunch of questions really fast, just like da 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 da, right? But you can't do that in the, in the real exam because when you skip through, it's like one question, load. One question, load. It wastes so much time. So I think that was probably the reason why I didn't do so well on the abstract reasoning. And that's really unfortunate because that was actually one of my best sections. And then the situational judgment, I got band one, which was really good. It was what I was expecting. You know, all my practice tests, I'd gotten band one. And that was really helpful. The Beamer, I actually can't find my my scores i can't remember my logins or anything so uh i remember roughly what i got and i remember the hardest section for me was the science section so this is actually the section i probably practiced the most uh but it was definitely the hardest especially like the chemistry questions because it's just such a hard time limit the time limit is so short so i just really ran out of time um, that's why practicing again is so so important. Practicing real time, real tests is so important. Anyway, my BMAT score, luckily enough, was good enough for Brighton and Sussex Medical School, so I did end up getting an interview for Brighton and Sussex, which was amazing. And it was an MMI interview, and that takes me on to my next point. So the interview, of course, is a very important stage as well. You know, after getting invited for an interview, like one third to half of the people that get an interview actually get a place. So it's really important that you actually prepare for the interviews. And this is especially important if you're doing an MMI interview because there are so many ways that you can prepare for an MMI interview. Um, I didn't have to prepare for a panel interview, but um, again, a lot of people think that you don't have to prepare for them. You really should prepare for an interview, especially if it's your first interview. For MMIs, there are so many ways to prepare for MMIs, but the way I did it is initially I started by looking up like hot topic questions. So basically what that is, it's questions uh, that usually come up in an interview. These are really happening right now in the medical system. So you really have to research a little bit into a UK healthcare system and different roles of different types of doctors. And uh, some main ones to focus on are GPs, foundation year doctors, uh, and obviously consultants, and know in a lot of detail about each of these and, and what their roles are in the hospital. I also came up with a list of, list of topics that I thought might come up, like, you know, my reason wanting to go into medical school, um, a little bit about me, and lots of other really uh, common interview questions that are about you. And if you look up your school, they might have online a list of like the different stations for the MMIs and that's really helpful to help make different uh, kind of prompts so that you can actually practice answering them a little bit as well. I came up with a list of topics that I thought could come up and then I listed like points that I would want to talk about for each of these topics. And then of course I practiced actually answering them in a short amount of time and making things concise and flow pretty smoothly and yeah that was very helpful but the day of the interview was <laughs> pretty stressful i mean i had to dress up really nice and it was online for me this year which was good and bad but yeah it was online and i was um i remember i was sitting in my room it was i put my aircon into my room because i wanted to make sure that i wasn't like too hot because that makes my rep my face red and despite all that i was sweating my face was red my my vote my voice and everything was like really croaky and like not coming out properly because of my nerves and you know that's the thing with me i get kind of nervous at like interviews and even just speaking in public and stuff i got really nervous and then but i did kind of like the mmi style because i felt like you know if you didn't do too well on one station you could go into another station you know if the interviewer that was interviewing you you know you didn't really like the questions that they were asking and things like that uh, it's it's okay because you only had a short amount of time with them and then you could move on to the next person and not have to worry too much about completely failing the interview. Yeah, that's one thing about the MMI. You need to make sure that once you've answered a question and once you've finished the station, you just forget about it completely because yeah, sometimes 
questions can go completely wrong. You don't even know what you're talking about sometimes, or you just start rambling. And trust me, if that happens, you just got to forget about it. I remember there was one interviewer that interviewed me and, you know, she was really lovely and everything. Um, but she was speaking really slowly and answer, asking the questions really slowly. And in my head, all I was thinking was, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have time to answer the question. And I was looking at the time, like ticking down of how long I had left at that station. And yeah, that was fairly stressful. And I really just wanted to answer the question, you know, and like rush, rush, rush. But just, just, just go with it. Just go with the flow, be calm, answer the question to the best of your ability. If you don't understand the question, it's totally okay to ask the interviewer if they can repeat it or if they can ask it in a different way. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video or if you find it helpful, please make sure you subscribe down below and give the video a like if you enjoy it because it really helps on my channel. Bye guys!